Stockton on Tees, a town back on the rise after years of limited opportunity and a less than desirable reputation. A proud town with a strong history, the first passenger railway, a legacy in steelworks, even the strange accolade of the widest high street in Britain. The town even boasts a few notable residents. Ivy Close, a pioneer of early cinema, taking the silent film world by storm. One of the first film celebrities in the early 1900s, with such a prestigious legacy, why has Ivy faded away in the town where she was born? Ivy Close was born in Stockton-on-Tees in 1890 to proud father Jack, who, in 1908, noticed a competition being run by the Daily Mirror, looking for the most beautiful woman in the world. He was quick to submit a shot of Ivy, which subsequently won the competition. From there, she was entered into a battle between herself and the American equivalent, which she also won, establishing herself essentially as the first incarnation of Miss World. A career in modelling and acting soon followed, promoting shampoo brands amongst a multitude of other endorsements. In silent movies, she was an international star, performing in the noted French film La Rue, or The Wheel, which was reviewed saying there is cinema before and after La Rue, as there is painting before and after Picasso. High praise indeed for a film made in the early days of cinema. Upon the creation of the American Talking Pictures, Ivy took the plunge and tried her luck to star in them. The plans fell through for a number of reasons, leaving her very much disillusioned at that point of her career. Once the limelight faded, Ivy resided in California for a number of years before her second husband's death in 1957. Ivy died on the 4th of December 1968 in a care home in Goring, Oxfordshire. A far cry from the fame-filled, sun-drenched life she once led, both here and in the States. With the world once at her feet and everyone in this town holding Ivy in the highest regard, it's nothing short of a tragedy that all that remains of her legacy in this town is an old warm plaque and a relatively new bar. The legacy that Ivy left in the entertainment industry began with the birth of her first son, Ronald. In his mid-teens, he was sent to work as an office boy for an oil company after the sudden death of his father in 1923. A few years later, Ronald secured the role of messenger boy at Elstree Studios, as well as gaining the role of assistant cameraman on the Alfred Hitchcock film, Blackmail. As he progressed through the ranks, Ronald became a producer and cinematographer. Later credits would include Oscar nominations for screenplays such as Brief Encounter and Great Expectations. Alongside this, Ronald went on to direct The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie, starring a young Maggie Smith, as well as The Poseidon Adventure. In 1996, Ronald would be awarded the BAFTA Fellowship Award for his contributions to film. From there came Ronald's son, Christopher Neem, Ivy's grandson born in 1942. Christopher would also follow the same route and become a writer and producer in his own right. His work included producing the BAFTA nominated film The Knowledge. Christopher's son, Ivy's great grandson, Gareth Neem, is the fourth generation of the family's media legacy. Named one of Variety's 500 most influential business leaders, Gareth is one of the minds behind award winning shows such as Downton Abbey and Hotel Babylon. I've made the journey to London to meet Gareth and gain an insight on Ivy from the best possible source. Uh, there's not a great amount of information out there on Ivy Close. Is there anything that you can tell us, any anecdotes or stories about her life that may have not be common knowledge? Well, you know, let me tell you what I know about the story of Ivy Close. Um, uh, you know, she, uh, she was my great grandmother, but um, I was less than two years old when she died, so I have no memories of her at all. But uh, she was a daughter of a jeweler from Stockton on Tees. Uh, and uh, her father was also a very keen amateur photographer um, in the early 20th century. This was a time when not many people had their own cameras. What was normal is that you and the family went once a year to a photographer's studio and you got your annual photograph taken of the family altogether. Cameras were very expensive. And, and you know, again, just like today, a, a beautiful photograph um, goes a long way. And she, the, there were various uh, gifts that she received for winning this competition of the most beautiful young woman, um, one, of, one, of, one of which was a brand new Rover motor car, which is maybe why she learned to drive and was a keen car enthusiast, um, but also to have her portrait painted by a society portrait painter, um, Sir Arthur Hacker, and that um, painting was then shown in the summer exhibition of 1908 in the Royal Academy. 
Uh, and then really on the, the back of her fame as a model, she became an actress, she was a stage actress, she got into talking pictures, uh, and talking pictures led her to um, Jacksonville, Florida, to go and make films with Oliver Hardy. You know, uh, Laurel and Hardy. Well, Oliver Hardy, before he got together with Stan Laurel, was in this uh, company called the Canem Company in Florida, and my great-grandmother was in pictures with him. And she had a... Uh, she was very well known in Britain at the time, uh, enough that my grandfather was bullied at school because his mother was a famous actress. Um, but um, her career was at its peak, probably due, uh, around about the, the First World War in the early 1920s. Do you know Ivy Close? Do you know what? Uh, do you know Ivy Close, the, uh, the actress? No. No, um, I was just wondering if you ever heard of her. No, I haven't, no. no. Do you know who Ivy Close is? I don't know. The pub is named after an actress from the 1800s called Ivy Close. And she yeah, I know who she like is. A, a big star. You know who she is? But can you just tell us like, what you know about her? Just, I know it's a very, very old name. I like watching yeah. old stuff, period dramas, oh, yeah. all that sort of stuff, you know what I mean? Um, in, in Downton Abbey, you have a character named Ivy, mm. and there's a nice moment in one of the episodes where they've been to see a film which stars Ivy Close. Mm. Um, how much of an influence did she have on the work in the show? And that, like, do you like to slip little things in there occasionally? Yes, it was it was an in joke um, that I discussed with with the writer Julian Fellows that uh, you know that's if I said I'd like to put a reference in to my great grandmother because she was uh, you know she would have been a top of the bill actress at the time, and I thought wouldn't that be fun to do it? So Julian had the idea that he would call one of the characters Ivy, and that she goes to see this film and says, "Isn't it amazing to think that I've got the same name as a movie star?" And so it was a little tiny reference which nobody would have picked up really apart from me and perhaps a few real enthusiasts in, in Stockton or something. But nobody would have picked up, even the actors that played the scene didn't understand the relevance of it. So I told them when we were doing the scene or afterwards, I said the reason why that's there is that's a reference to my great-grandmother. So it was a, it was a little in-joke like, a, I don't know, one of those um, carpet weavers in the Middle East who put some little things or some, somebody weaves or something, put some little reference that means something to them and nobody else. Um, aside from your family, can you speak a little bit about the influence that you may have had on the wider world, you know, things such as uh, female empowerment and the integration to like the working class people? You know, I think that to be able to have a career in those days where your husband will stay at home and look after the children in London while you're going to make a film in Chamonix and then going to Florida every time, she really sort of had to get her husband's permission then to go and do that kind of work. Um, so, I mean, she was, uh, and there are still to this day, if you, if you know, you know there's little antique shops and flea markets that have old postcards and things. You will very often to this day see um, postcards that were sent out with, with sort of famous models and actresses of the time. And there are many, I've got many at home of, of Ivy and these different photographs. They, a lot of them are black and white. and are, Well, they're all black and white, but some of them are also retouched with that um, tinting that they did, where they, they sort of painted in colour to make them look more lifelike. Um, my name's Kath Barnett and I'm um, a volunteer at Preston Park Museum in Stockton. I've uh, been volunteering for about nine years. And uh, when uh, people come to the museum, do you, obviously you were, did you say you were a fan of Ivy Clause? Yes. Yeah. In, in the museum itself, we have um, a video of Ivy Close, um, which, when I started working in the museum, I needed to find a bit more information about this lady, especially as she was from Stockton. And when we have visitors in the uh, museum, we very often have groups of very young school children. And just, re just recently, um, a group of them were looking at the video of the Sleeping Beauty and I came up to them and mentioned that this lady was from Stockton and she was a famous film star, uh, international beauty. Does it bother you that Ivy Close isn't remembered in a Bourne town perhaps as much as she should be? Oh yes, I think it's a great shame. I think it's a great shame because Stockton has a lot of history and we have a lot of um, important people. I mean, somebody like Jimmy James, for instance, or on the television, I mean, he was, um, you know, nationally known. And Ivy Close, possibly, if she'd still been alive, would have been um, well known on television. But nobody knows about her. Um, finally, would you like to see more done on educating the public about their pioneering ancestors, especially from the local area that oh, they yes. also from? Oh, yes, very much so. Very much so. I'm, I'm into, I do family history. 
So I've done my own family history, but that tends to go back over. Um, what we've got, the information we've got on Ivy Close is taking us um, forwards, but I would quite like to see some work done on her family tree going back a little bit. Uh, uh, Instructor of is a town of pride itself by its history. Uh, does it bother you that Ivy isn't remembered as much as she maybe should have been in the town that she came from? No, it doesn't bother me at all because it was, um, we're talking about a hundred years ago, her, her time, and um, these things don't get um, remembered tremendously. She, she was a, an actress who had a lot of fame in Britain in the Edwardian times and early in the 1920s. And, um, and she never really had any fame in the US at all. So um, in fact, she quite, I'm told that she quite liked um, living in the US because she, she, she had no sort of baggage of that kind. It, what she, I think in England there was still that, there was the girl who was once this famous beauty queen and this, uh, this famous actress, and she didn't have any of that in America, which she liked. Um, so it doesn't really bother me that it's forgotten about. I like the, um, you know, I, I think it's a great story and I like to tell the story of how this um, middle-aged 50-year-old man is actually the direct descendant of a lady who was effectively the first Miss World because after the Daily Mirror contest there was then, um, there was a similar competition in the US and the finalists in Britain and the finalists in the US were compared together and Ivy won that competition as well, so I often say she was effectively the first you know, global beauty queen. So I love that story. I've obviously, my grandfather and my father told, uh, told us these stories all, all our lives, and it was a lovely piece of family history, but I'm very happy that it's just that. I'm delighted that you're doing this project for your town, that, um, you know, that it could help towards, you know, not, not just for Ivy's sake, but um, I think it's always good for a community to have a sense of where it's come from, and what its mark on the world has been. Um, Ivy once said in an interview, um, I love watching myself on screen, but I'm frightfully critical. I hate nearly everything I do. Um, do you think that this mentality that she had, of the self, self-deprecation almost, it, um, contributed to the fact that she didn't succeed once the talkies came around in America? That's a good question, and I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think I've heard that quote before. But to me, now thinking as a, as a drama producer, uh, making productions today, I could hear any number of actors making that comment. Um, it's the trouble with a job that's all about putting yourself out, what you look like, your appearance, how you speak, what your performance was like. People have a, a great drive to do that, but they also, um, it's very exposing. And uh, so I, hearing those words from Ivy Close, I, I could hear a hundred other actors saying the same thing. If we had a time machine and 18 year old Ivy Close was in 2018, um, how do you think her life would have mapped out now? Would it have been the same? Would she have been able to have the same amount of success in the same capacity? Or That is really impossible to tell. We won't know that. But I, I do think that her route to fame uh, is, is not unfamiliar to 18 year old people now. It's um, her father sent in a photograph of her. That's, you know, he took a photograph, he sent it in, it got her, it got some interest in her, it led to her being photographed by the top photographer. Her fame came from that, she became an actress. It's not a million miles away from posting something on, you know, from your Instagram, from something you, you've made and put on YouTube that you've got noticed in some other way. That way of sort of having the confidence to just going for it and self, and Having, you know, just trying something out, sending a picture and just, I don't know, I, I imagine my great-grandfather had no idea, sorry, my great-great-grandfather had no idea what was going to happen with his photograph of his daughter, um, but he gave it a go. And I think that, that, that way of just putting yourself out there and trying to communicate your message and, um, and certainly the idea of beauty and glamour is, you know, it's, it's obviously an enormous driver of things in entertainment now. And isn't it wonderful and fascinating to think that 110 years ago, it was exactly the same. Along this journey, finding out more about Ivy Close, her life, career and legacy, it fills me with sadness that her star is slowly fading out. However, meeting people like Gareth, who are so passionate about conserving her memory, shows to me that she will one day be remembered as the rightful star that she is. As such a pioneer of early film, especially as a woman in the 1900s, it truly is remarkable that Ivy isn't held up to the same regard as her peers of the time. 
As a filmmaker from the same town as Ivy, in an age of social media where information is so readily available to share, it seems that now more than ever is a time for Ivy to be remembered and reflected upon as one of the original icons of early cinema.